Christian, how are you doing? I pray that all is well with you and your families at this time. So welcome to a brand new session. Uh, we had a bit of a break for two weeks in which we were preparing for this wonderful month of Kartik, having come from the wonderful month of Purushottama. So Kartik is a very special month to all the devotees and many of you I know are very excited and very eager to hear the beautiful pastimes of Krishna during this month of Kartik. Many devotees were also messaging me and mentioning that they were missing Vrindavan this year. <laughs> yes, I think we all are. Uh, I feel very fortunate that although it's lockdown, I've been locked up here in Mayapur for Purishottam and for Kartik. So I'm very grateful to the Lord for His blessings for that. And yes, we all are definitely missing Vrindavan. And that's how it should be. Mm. We should feel that separation in order to feel attachment. If there is no separation, there is no attachment. So the fact that you're feeling some separation means you have some attachment. Uh, and in Shastra, this is called Dham Nista, mm? attachment to the holy Dham. So this is very wonderful nectar of devotion. Rupa Goswami uh, tells us about the 64 Angas of devotional service. And one of those Angas is Ujra Vrat, where one keeps the Vrat of Kartik month, hmm? the Kartik month of Vrat. If one observes this uh, month of Kartik, it's so of Damodar, hmm? it's so auspicious, it's so beneficial for their devotional service. Uh, so we'll be going over many things. Uh, in particular, we'll be going over Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Canto 10, the 10th Canto, in particular chapter 9. Mother Yashoda binds Krishna. It's a beautiful narrative uh, expounding the beautiful exchange of love between Krishna and his devotee and the different nuances that come through that, analyzing that, trying to imbibe that and we'll see different ways in which Krishna does Leela pastimes. Mm. So this ten, so this ninth chapter uh, has about 23 verses in it. Uh, so we'll go over it, and then towards the end of the um, Kartik month, we'll also go over the Damodara Stikam, because there's a lot of beautiful uh, meditation that is given by Satyavrata Muni in that uh, Damodara Stikam one of my favorite uh, uh, astikams, hmm? the eight verses glorifying Krishna as uh, the baby Damodar. So in Kartik, what to do? I think you all are familiar with the lamp offering. Uh, many auspicious things are also done during this month as described in uh, Skanda Purana, describes the detailed uh, description, Kartik Mahatmya comes, one chapter is the Kartik Mahatmya, the glories of the Kartik month. So many things are discussed, uh, but in essence Krishna is saying in Gita, Satatam Kirtayanto Maam Yetantascha Dhritavrata Nyamasham Chastamam Bhaktya Nitya Yukta Upasate. He is saying that my devotees Satatam Kirtayanto Maam. They're always chanting my glories. So that's one of the things we want to be absorbed in in this month of Kartik. Find time to always be chanting Krishna's glories. Satatam. Krishna says Satatam there. He doesn't say a uh, few hours, one hour, two hours. And we'll see that being expressed in this pastime of the Braj Basis. Where does that come from? that satatam, the chanting of Krishna's names all the time. So we see Mother Yashoda also, they do that. They, they make beautiful Braj songs. When I used to, when I was in Vrindavan, then 
we used to have uh, on every ekadasi the brajbasis do parikram and big crowd you can imagine what a big crowd is on parikram so you can never miss ekadasi and purnima you just know those days because it's full crowd in parikram and all the brajbasi girls the young uh, mainly unmarried girls they would be in groups and they'll be singing bhajans local braj bhajans Uh, that that's come down in their parampara system over the years uh singing and glorifying the the past times of radha and krishna so many of that uh, still lingers in my mind but the thing is to get it to linger in the heart that's where it counts because mind you see how it is with the mind one moment it accepts and it's enjoying the Mm, relishment of Krishna's past times. Next moment, oh, Maya is also very attractive. <laughs> so we also we got to be careful of that. And during this month, if we get absorbed, because once there's absorption, there's very little chance for distraction. But the fact that we can get distracted is proof that we're not absorbed. So we want to get absorbed in Krishna's past times and. there is techniques that mother yashoda herself is showing of how to absorb in krishna's leela so having said that then we are starting this beautiful chapter chapter 9 called mother yashoda is binding krishna hmm? uh we know to bind someone i've heard a beautiful description of this leela also called the rope of love i thought it was very nice it sounded more like a drama that is done in a theater the rope of love but it's a fact that to bind someone first you have to catch them <laughs> and krishna cannot be caught he cannot uh, you cannot grab on to krishna just by any yoga system i think we covered that in purushottam month and you cannot just uh, catch on to krishna by your austerity by your tapasya by your uh, just by your yoga no krishna can only be bound by love and this uh, satyavrata muni tells us that in a conversation with narada muni he tells us this beautiful eight verses glorifying what is he seeing in his meditation what is he seeing uh in this beauty again the beauty of the lord we we saw in the previous uh sessions that we were doing brahma stuti where brahma was becoming bewildered but he didn't just get bewildered by krishna in his power the power to bewilder you hmm sarvascha ham hridi sanevisto matta smritir gyanam apavanamscha krishna gives knowledge remembrance and forgetfulness so that bewilderment didn't just come by his power it came by his beauty the beauty of krishna totally bewildered lord brahma and that is enchantment so that is what we seeing in this leela through the eyes of satyavrata muni where he seeing the beauty of this baby child uh krishna in his pure pure love pure beauty Uh so it's a beautiful meditation. We're going to go over it as well. So let's start with an auspicious bang for the month of Kartik. For today I'm sure you have many things planned for Kartik. Uh some of you may be be doing a vrat uh you know maybe just taking kichri, some doing just ekadashi. So many different things that you do. So please be aware that whatever you're doing is wonderful and do it for the pleasure of Krishna. Don't do it for any material motive because you want something in return because that creates disappointment. Why? Because the whole foundation of your doing the vrat is based on some material desire and those things that's Krishna's will whatever he wants whether he wants to give it or not that's his prerogative we are just love him we just engaging in devotional service to love him and that is the real value that is the gem 
that's where bhakti lies so this beautiful verse starts text 1 and 2 are combined shri sukha uvacha ekada grihi dhaseshu yashoda nanda gehini karmantara niyukta su nirmamant swayam dadhi yani yani ha gitani tad bala charitani cha dadhi nirmantane kale smarantitani agyata so we know we know this is taking place the discussion in naima sharanya between shukadev with swami and parikshit maharaj who is asking about who asked uh, who asked sukadev to please explain the pastimes of krishna so sukad so sukadev go swami is continuing and he describes one day when mother yashoda saw that all the maid servants were engaged in other household affairs so this pastime is taking place in gokul it's not in vrindavan as yet krishna is still a baby uh, but he's killed many other demons already he's killed shakatasur and putana bakasur these demons so at this time in the household in gokul gokul go is the cows namo brahmana devaya go brahmana hitaya cha jagat pitaya krishnaya govindaya namo namaha so this cows worship of the cows and the brahmanas so why do they worship the cows many reasons are given but one of the main uh, understands is one of the main understandings is that the cow is the embodiment of all the devatas so for us it is important therefore even during this kartik month uh, devotees do go puja we have those five days that come in uh, uh, acknowledging or uh, worship of the cow govardhan puja there's a five day celebration here in india in the western world they just do it for govardhan puja and diwali but here in india it's a five day build up and all inclusive worshiping the cow celebrating diwali actually this festival took place on diwali day so it was very interesting proper to mention that in the purport so mother yashoda at this place gokul then she is trying to prepare through the day you must know krishna would have uh, is still very small so he is still sleeping at this time <laughs> so krishna is very much a baby and he is still sleeping at this time so she is trying to do as much as she can because you know how it is when children get up oh even i can tell you who <laughs> oh. we have we have a group here oh, they they adorable children wonderful kids and here in this community there's a, a group of kids that run and play and i call i call them the rowdy bunch <laughs> that's the name i gave them the rowdy bunch but now i was telling one devotee i have to change their name he says why prabhu i said because they gone more rowdy rowdy is not enough now to give another name <laughs> oh but they are wonderful hmm? and they devotee children you know so they in their games they always playing krishna this that and they fighting also just like the children do so when we hear uh, and you see these kids playing around and uh, frolicking then we can imagine how it must have been with krishna hmm? and his friends so at this age krishna is very small and mother yashoda is trying to do as much as she can before all the uh, <laughs> and starts doing the devotional service <laughs> so she is trying to do as much as she can and she also has people who helps her hmm? these maid servants and it's described in the third canto 
that in the Putana Leela, Putana actually became one of these Sadvi. Hmm? She became a Sadvi. Aho Bakiyam Kala Kala Kutam. So this verse that comes in the third canto is describing how how fortunate is Putana that she became one of the maid servants just because she wanted to offer her breast milk to Krishna as a mother to a child. She wanted to offer this to Krishna. And just because of that activity, although her intention was to poison, but she offered something to Krishna. So she would have been one of the Putana. Huh? You wouldn't have think so, but she would have been one of the maid servants who would have been helping Mother Yashoda here in Gokul, in this cow pasturing uh, community, uh, to serve Krishna, to make things for Krishna too. Because Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda were like the heads of the community there. Upananda, Nanda Baba's father. Uh, Upananda, Nanda Baba's elder brother. So they were heads of the community. And uh, so many people come forward to assist and to help because they got so many, nine lakh cows Nanda Baba has. So many times they could have got milk and it's a beautiful agricultural based community based on cow protection. Go Raksha. Kishi Go Raksha Gvanena. This a Vaishya Dharma to take this a Vaishya community. So Mother Yashoda has these maid servants and she personally began to churn the yogurt. So the the, the maid servants were busy, they were different activities, but for Krishna's yogurt she personally meant to do it. Why? Because when you do something, when you serve somebody personally, then it's a great opportunity for love to develop. So she, for Krishna, she doesn't want anybody else to do. She does herself. And Prabhupada also talks about this in the purport. So he goes on to say, And while churning, she remembered the childish activities of Krishna and in her own way, she composed songs and enjoyed singing to herself about all those activities. So this is what I was saying about Satatam Kirtan. That the Brajbasis, they make their own songs based on Krishna and his activities. Because Krishna, let's face it, nobody else has shown activities like Krishna has done. So there's so much to talk about. Mm. And from this Leela, we get so much of beautiful description of Krishna as we are trying to understand what is God and what is his activities with uh, his devotees. There are many beautiful religions in the world, but almost none of them have descriptions of the kingdom of God. What does he do there? What is the activities there? So this is being described over here. So it goes on to say, Purport, Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur, quoting from the Vaishnav Toshini of Srila Sanatan Goswami, says that the incident of Krishna's breaking the pot of yogurt and being bound by Mother Yashoda took place on the Diwali day. Wow, you know, we as, when we were Hindus, we would celebrate Diwali, it would be the, the biggest festival of the year, but we had no idea that this took place on the day Krishna broke the butter pot. Mm. The day Krishna broke the yogurt pot and Mother Yashoda bind him up. So this took place on the Diwali day. Or Deepa Malika. So it's another name for the Diwali day, Deepa Malika. Deepa means lamp. So we know uh, this Diwali started from the time Ram had come back to Ayodhya after the exile and killing Ravana. So uh, it's also, uh, you know, this is now Dwarpa Yuga that took place in Treta Yuga. This is Dwarpa Yuga. So the tradition was passed on. And on this Diwali day, hmm, this pastime took place. So it goes on to say, 
even today in india this festival is generally celebrated very gorgeously in the month of kartika by fireworks and lights especially in bombay so bombay is a very multi- multicultural city we know the ganesh puja is now very big in bombay when they do and also we just had navaratran recently so the durga puja is also big but diwali is also a huge festival and everybody just comes out and it's a wonderful opportunity to build community spirit during that time it's a time of giving i remember in our childhood you know it was a big thing because we had to go house to house to deliver the sweet meats <laughs> so you knock that door you knock go all the neighbors houses they'll also give you sweet meats back you know mm. because you there right now they also prepared one week in advance sometimes the everything is being prepared all the gulab jams and jalebis and barfi chana magaj ish <laughs> wonderful sweet meats that uh, come during that time so we had to go house to house door to door and then gradually from making making people even stopped now you don't if you get something you lucky somebody will send or somebody sends this side you just take that thing just revamp it and send it the other side <laughs> is not an expression of love anymore and nobody does it anymore nobody knows how to do everything is on youtube now all the sweet meat recipes and all of that who knows actually how to do these things anymore the new tradition the new culture they're not interested in those things but these were based on a loving exchange that's why they were so important so it goes on to say it is it is to be understood that among all the cows of nanda maharaj several of mother yashoda's cows eat only grass so flavored that the grasses would automatically flavor the milk so you can imagine i always think of this nesquik <laughs> uh, this nesquik uh, flavors that you would get strawberry flavors i remember uh, in govardhan many many years back about 20 years back gopi paranadan prabhu 